Hi y'all, welcome back to Astro Motivation. My name is Jupiter James, where I awaken the astrologer within you and aim to give you a little encouragement and inspiration per your unique placement within your birth chart. You know, I really do feel that before a time of technology, we were a people and a culture and a society that were better able to look up at the stars and understand what was trending within the universe. And it was with that knowledge that we were able to look down at our birth charts and understand and decipher where our dreams were and how to get them. And so if that sounds good to you, let's get into it. Today, we're gonna get into Scorpio season. Happy Scorpio season oh my god for my Scorpios out there wait wait hold on hold on hold on maybe you'll receive it better like this happy Scorpio season <laughs> Happy Scorpio season for my Scorpios out there. You know, um, this is a time to be alive. It's a time for you to thrive. This is your season where the magic and the undercurrents of the world are kind of lifted and everyone gets to see what you always see on a daily basis, which is, you know, the, the deep, the dark, the very intense, the extreme, and also the magical. So happy Scorpio season to you. Today, this video is gonna be an in-depth video of your Scorpio placement. Um, and your placements. This is going to be for my Scorpio in the first housers. Now I have a Scorpio rising video on my channel already. This can serve as a compliment to that, but if you wanna watch that video, that video got a lot of likes, a lot of views, and you guys really came through for that video. You know, I would really beg to differ and beg the wager right now that my Scorpios are the most mystical in the Zodiac and the most interested in astrology. And it's really, Interesting to see, but I'm not surprised at the same time. So watch this Scorpio in the first house video that I'm gonna get into and after this video, go ahead and head over to that Scorpio Rising video. Um, and that video is my most, most in-depth, really unpacking the rising sign and what you experience throughout the entire chart if you are a Scorpio Rising. But for this specific video in this specific series, I'm just gonna give you Scorpio in the first house, okay? For those that may have Scorpio in the first house or Pluto and Mars in the first house or a combination like that, but welcome. Okay, so today we are gonna get into Scorpio in the first house, all right? Scorpio in the first house is gonna give me the energy of someone who is constantly going through many transformations in their life. You know, it is their destiny to always be seeking the underlining meanings of everything in this life. You know, if they go and get some coffee, it's not just a walk to go get some coffee. It is a walk with the stars and the angels and the demons. And it is their pursuit to go get that coffee and the lessons they learn on the way to go get that coffee. And while they go get that coffee, there's gonna be some people along the way that give them a certain look or give them a certain olive branch or give them a certain energy that they can feed off of to better understand themselves, the world around you, and life and existence in, in itself. And if, if that that's the video right there, I don't even need to say anymore. I don't even need to go into depth. That's it right there. All right, bye. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. But no, really, honestly, with Scorpio in the first house is gonna give that placement, but let's break it apart. That way we understand these aspects a little bit deeper and a little bit more, and we can do more with the information we've been given, and we're not just confined to Scorpio in the first house, okay? So with Scorpio, Scorpio is going to um, be ruled by Pluto and ruled by Mars, okay? And with that, that means that when Pluto and Mars have a baby, they create Scorpio. Now, Pluto, is very um, mysterious energy. Pluto is obsessive energy. Pluto is powerful energy, okay? It is influential and magnetic energy, okay? But it is also shrouded in mystery. When you think of Pluto in the cosmos, right? In school, everyone was like, oh my God, Pluto's that last little planet that no one knows about and no one talks about. That is gonna give that plutonic energy, right, to the person. Now, you couple that with Mars, and Mars is what? Mars is very aggressive, it's fighting energy, it's friction energy, right? And so when you mix that together, you get the energy of Scorpio, okay? And what that, when you put this in the first house, the first house being ruled by Aries and Mars and your appearance and your body and who you are, you're gonna get someone who gets a lot of psychic and subtle aggression towards them, okay? These people are going to be very deep and insightful and very penetrating in their gaze and penetrating in who they are, and that's gonna create a sense of power around them in their posture and how they, in their attitude and their wisdom and what they think and, and they what they perceive because Pluto is giving them in their appearance, in their body, it's shrouding them in not only mystery, but in that mystery they have power, okay? and 
and it's in them maybe secluding themselves or sitting this one out or sitting on the sidelines and observing that gives them power and control of the situations that they find themselves in and in of themselves. They wanna be in control of themselves. They do not want anyone to rule them or control them or tell them what to do. No way, like sure they may go along with it, but at the end of the day, they're, if they're in the car with the mom or the cousins and everyone wants to go to this place, they will be the one in the car like looking like, okay, I'm gonna go, but if one thing pop off, I'm gonna say something. You know, they're, they're very like that. They're always on guard, I wanna say, and that's because, you know, being a Scorpio in the first house, I feel that you, on the day to day, don't really know how people are going to receive you. You probably walk out and you're just like, why is everyone so jealous of me? Like, why is everyone giving me the stank eye? I'm sure you could walk on the street and people do little gestures with their face towards you or they, they'll scratch their nose or they'll, they'll, they'll look over you or gloss over you, but they know they see you. Does that make sense? Like, and that is what Scorpio energy is gonna give. It's gonna give, people are gonna be afraid to energetically address you. And so what they do is they, they energetically attack you because you are going to be a force of power and you're gonna make people feel insecure with all that power. Even, look, even if you're sitting down reading a book, playing with puppies, people are going to perceive you a certain way and you're gonna be very, you're gonna have a very charged aura, meaning that people are either a polarizing aura, meaning that people are either gonna love you or they're gonna hate you. There's no in between with the Scorpio. Either people are gonna wanna like, you know, fight you or they're gonna wanna be obsessed with you and follow you and love you and like, you know, but believe it or not, you are that way as well, if you think about it. And if life is a mirror, life is just showing you who you are. You know, you are so to the point and so, um, penetrating and detailed with the world around you and the people around you that you are that way. You either love people or you don't. It's either, oh my God, I love this person. This person is so real. This person is aligned with who I am. Oh my God, I feel something for this person. Oh my, or you're just like, mm -mm. I'm good on that person. It's like that. It's either you wanna be best friends with somebody or their worst enemy. There is no in between with you. And that is scorpionic energy. It's, it's just an energy of you know, in this life, you're gonna find that you are gonna be in a constant state of weeding out who is for you and who is not, what is for you and what is not, and you're gonna be on the express track to that. You're, not, you're never gonna be in a situation where you have to think too long or wait something out. No, you are all about in this life, I like this person, I don't, I like this job, I don't, I'm out, I'm in. Um, this one's for me, this one's not for me. And think about that, when you are that quick, when you are that insightful and that intuitive to know what is for you and what's not, think of the transformations you're gonna go through in this life and how quickly that's gonna be. And for, versus other people who, you know, they may get with someone and they kinda like someone, you know, they're cool, they don't really rub them the wrong way and they stick around and they play cavalier and, you know, they're like smiling in each other's face, but really ultimately they don't really like each other, but they, they haven't been given any outward evidence of that. So they're just like, okay, cool. But then lo and behold, three, four, five months later, these friends hate each other and they're the, each other's worst enemy. Whereas you, you already know. The minute they walk up, you read their image, you read their body language, you're like, nope, you're an enemy. Nope, I've got nothing for you. Goodbye. Goodbye, and people can feel that. People know, they can feel you feeling them. They can feel you sizing them up energetically and they know that no matter what they do, they, are, they can't win you over. And that is sometimes why you get these psychic, subtle aggressions towards you where people will do certain things in their body language to kind of exit you out of the picture or disregard your, um, disregard your presence, you know, even though your presence can't be disregarded. But what I will say with this placement is that you're, you're gonna experience a lot of trauma, you're gonna experience a lot of change in your life, and it is through that Martian, Mars aggression that the universe is being thrown towards you that you are going to, you know, assimilate that into who you are and it's gonna make you stand a little taller and it's also gonna help you become more and more insightful and have more wisdom and more foresight. It's like everything you go through, you're gonna become more and more powerful and more penetrating because not only do you know you can get through that thing, 
And not only do you know that nothing can't take you down, but now you know the lessons and you know what to look for in other people. You know the telltale signs, you know the warning signs, you know the, you just know. And that is what a Scorpio in the first house is gonna be. They're gonna go through a lot of transformations in this life. And they're gonna learn, they're gonna learn that they need to let go. That's one thing for you is that you can't get too comfortable. The minute you get too comfortable, my Scorpio in the first houses, the universe, God is gonna push you into the next direction. It's gonna push you into the, the, the minute you get, because you're not meant to be comfortable. You're meant to be the great spiritual warrior, the great mystic. You are meant to just flow and fly and breeze through life knowing that the universe is gonna lay the tracks as you land. You know, as you roll, on the track, like right now you could be thinking, oh my God, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Because when you look out, there's no train tracks on the on the road that you're running. But you find that as you are riding over that, that train track, something comes and helps you out. Something comes and helps you out. And I think you know what that something is. It's you, it's your manifestation, it's your universe, it's your communion with the universe. You are the most connected in the zodiac. But if you want more insight, go to my go to my Scorpio rising video. I really do highly suggest that. But before you do, if you have Scorpio in the first house, can you let me know a planet that your Scorpio in the first house is in? And I'll be sure to write back what you could be experiencing with your Scorpio first house specific planet that you name, okay? Because sometimes you could be experiencing a, a different complex or a different layer of that energy. And I would love to let you know what that could mean for you, okay? But again, happy Scorpio season. Continue to be a fighter. Continue to be... Um, I don't know why this just came to my mind, but have you ever seen Mortal Bones, um, The City of Instruments? I, If you haven't, go see it. But you know how they are all shadow hunters, right? And they live in New York. They live in New York City and they walk around. But what they are experiencing is different from the mundane. You know, it's different from the people who can't see what they see. And so while they're fighting, people are thinking that they're fighting air or that they're fighting you know, uh, they, they just don't see what they see. But you have to go see that. You have to know what I'm talking about to know what I'm talking about. But go see it and you will understand that you are just living in a different realm. You're in a different realm where you are fighting the shadows of people and situations and things. You are not living the mundane life. And it is very magical. You see magic on a daily basis. But stay faithful, stay courageous, stay you, stay psychic, and all things that are for you will be for you. And don't get attached to too many things, okay? Learn that life is an ebb and flow and that you are meant to be the great transformer. You are not meant to be the same person you were last year, the year before that, the a day ago, a week ago you are meant to transform okay but yeah let me know if you have any other um any other what is it any other placements within your birth chart and i will get that in the queue as a part of the videos that i can get out for you guys but without further ado happy scorpio season i'm rooting for you and i will see y'all in the next video bye into Scorpio in the second house. Now, Scorpio in the second house is going to give me um, someone who is has a lot of control and a lot of secrecy involving their money and the values that they hold true to themselves. But before we go ahead and unpack that very deep aspect, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are better able to understand exactly what each aspect is doing and we can use it in different areas of our lives. That way we're not just confined to Scorpio in the second house. Now. Before we do that, Scorpio in the second house is going to be akin to my uh, Virgo risings. Okay, so my Virgo rising, this video is for you. And anyone else that may have Pluto, Mars, or Scorpio in the second house. Okay, so now with Scorpio, Scorpio on the birth chart for me is going to show me where um, trauma is induced where a lot of dark energy and like by dark energy i mean the not so lovely things in life okay and i don't mean dark or like anything devilish i just mean like the things that are not so pleasant you know where we may feel unsafe or where things may be a little bit traumatic you know for scorpios out there if you're watching this video i think that you are ready for that if you've clicked on scorpio you may already have heard of what scorpio is so if you are not ready for these types of subjects i kindly ask that you come back later when you are ready and when you really want to know the deep 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 because with scorpio it is a very deep 
deep placement, okay? And, and it is a deep sign. It is not something that is very light or fluffy, all right? Um, but with that said, Scorpio is going to give you very deep things of, you know, transformation through trauma. This is what I consider Scorpio to be. This is where there is death and rebirth, where things may happen or where things are hidden from you and just out of focus and more so where things happen in this area that force you to change and transform that area of your life, okay? It is it is through the, the trauma and through the hard times that we are able to transform in that area that Scorp Scorpio was in and come out stronger and be able to, at the end of that traumatic situation, the lesson that is learned that Scorpio will give over time, that we become a powerhouse in that area where that area, when we master it, we look back and we go, that that area of my life, I'm good. I, I'm I'm more than good. You know, I'm scary good. I'm like, I. It's almost psychic level good. Once you get good at knowing what your Scorpio sign is ruling, okay. So, with the second house, the second house is always going to be ruled by Taurus, and it's going to be ruled by uh, Venus. And this is going to give you the energy of money. It's going to give you the energy of your stability and the the kind of the the lessons and the values that you grew up on. You know, Taurus in the second house. Now, no matter what your respective sign may be on your uh, second house, in this case, it'll be Taurus. But know that the underlining sign that rules the second house is Taurus. All right. So. This is the foundation that you are born from, you know? We are all just fruits of the tree that we grew up on. That, and so whether for good or for bad, you are going to be, your values are gonna be from that, okay? You are going to be um, living off of that foundation and the sign will tell me what that foundation was for you. It'll tell me the family dynamic and what you kind of went through in a sense. I'll get into it in this video, what I mean, okay? But yeah. So what happens when we take Scorpio and we throw it into the second house? Now with Scorpio in the second house, this is gonna mean for me that you come from a background where things were probably in your family very traumatic, okay? Things were very shrouded in, in a place in your life where for me, what I just get a vision of is that there was probably a lot of friction within the household for whatever reason. There was probably a lot of unsafety and just you feeling of danger or feeling of anxiety, something that you felt like, okay, you couldn't really turn to anyone. Even though people were there, they were people and, and relationships of people who you just felt that you were not safe. You were not, you could not maybe be yourself. You could not really express you. And through that, through maybe them inflicting trauma on you or them being power struggle battles, it required you to transform. And through that transformation, you built a tough skin in order to get through in this life. And this also could mean that through that, you are able to see the deeper meanings of life. Through the trauma that was inflicted, through your, your foundation, through your family, you are now searching for and value realness. You value the, you, you value deep connection. You value very deep connections and you value very deep things in life. So this makes for someone who probably, again, did not have a very safe childhood, but now in their life, they are someone that values people who are able to be real with them, people who are able to be by their side with them on a rainy day, people who are uh, devoted to a higher power. P these people will probably, through what they've experienced in their life, will be people who, who believe in a higher power, who believe in something bigger than themselves, and they are searching for others who are that way with them and who are that way on their own you know they they really want to attract and be around people who value those same things you know they, they are not going to value superficiality this is the opposite of this is the opposite of leo in the second house this is the opposite of that it's gonna this is gonna be people who really want and value realness, spirituality, deepness, 
passion, people who are real, people who are able to get down in the deep with them and, and figure out what is going on with the world and people around them. These are going to be very deep people, okay? So that's going to be a value of yours. Now, when it comes to your money, you're going to have a lot of control with your money. You are probably not going to want to give your money away a lot of times. You're not going to want to share your money. You're not going to want to really talk about money with people. You, the, you could be a millionaire and people would never know. You, you could be a gazillionaire and people would never know. You could be poor and no one would ever know. Because when it comes to money, you're gonna keep that area of your life very secret and to yourself. I do know one thing is that you are not gonna allow that credit score to get anywhere below where it needs to be because that for you is you losing power. You are gonna be one of, one of, be someone that through your money, you are gonna wanna create power and safety and security for yourselves and this is a value that you hold true to yourself now if this sounds like you scorpio in the second housers let me know in the comments below are you someone that the foundation of the home that you grew up in taught you a very early on that maybe you need to keep the things that you value to yourself maybe the the insightful knowledge that you have and the deepness that you are maybe you couldn't express those things safely in the childhood home that you grew up in let me know if you felt that way growing up did your fam or it could even be that your family just taught you to be someone that doesn't take the world at face value you could be someone that your family said hey son look when you go outside you look both ways and you don't trust that one you don't trust this one all right unless they give you a reason to trust them you know you are going to be like that if that sounds like you let me know in the comments below and while you're at it can you tell me a planet that your second house is in, okay? So give me a planet that your second house Scorpio is in. Give me one planet. Don't give me a degree. Do not give me an opposition. Do not give me... Y'all be getting clever in those comments. Give me one planet that your Scorpio in the second house is in and I'll be, I'll be ready to give you a little analysis on what you could be experiencing with that one planet, okay? Um, yeah, so that could be my Scorpio in the second housers. My biggest motivation and inspiration for my second house Scorpios is to continue to um, rely on your own strength. Continue to be someone that, you know, um, is after the deeper meanings and the deeper things in life, but also try to not be someone who completely closes themselves off to help from others, all right? If people wanna lend you money or give you things or help you out, allow that, okay? And also try not to be someone who looks for the bad in people right off the bat, okay? I know that may be hard for you. I know that you probably grew up in situations where you had to think that way, but as we grow older, these things dissipate. You know, we are we have to be able to nurture the inner child that we've come from, okay? And so, although this is a value of yours and I don't want you to change it, I want you to balance it out because in this life that we are being given, it's not about completely changing it and your your money situation will will change over time but it's not about chaining things it's just about balancing them out all right so with that being said i really do hope that you got some encouragement and some inspiration from this video if you would like me to do a different placement within your birth chart let me know what you would like for me to cover and i will put that as a part of my queue of videos that i will get out for you guys but until then i will see y'all in the next video and y'all have a great day all right bye to Scorpio in the third house. Now, Scorpio in the third house is going to be for my Virgo risings or anyone who has Scorpio in the third house, but this is going to make for someone who probably is very deep and penetrating within their mind and their speech, okay? They can say things or know things that people have never told them, you know, and you can see into the core of the problem of a situation, okay? Your mind is fine-tuned to dissect others and dissect situations and see into the souls of other people. And so with this placement, it can make for someone who is very penetrating within their speech and within their mind, okay? So, but before we go ahead and really dive deep into that, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are better able to do more with the information we've been given and we're not just confined to Scorpio in the third house, okay? Because on this channel, we are learning together and I'm teaching the language of the stars, okay? So although you are getting insights into your placement, I want you to be able to read other people's charts. I want you to be able to go out and look at your friend's charts and say, okay, 
Jupiter James told me Scorpio means this and Jupiter James told me that, you know, the third house means this. You get what I'm saying? And that way you can do more with the information when you see it come up in different areas of life, okay? So, with Scorpio, Scorpio in the birth chart for me is always gonna show me where transformation will happen for the person through traumatic events, okay? Where this person may hide things or keep things to themselves until the time is right or where this person may do things to a T into an almost uh, psychic detail, okay? It's, it's the deep, deep, deep core of things, all right? It's the psychic detail that Scorpio is able to manifest or offer or lend wherever Scorpio is in the bird chart, okay? So remember that. Scorpio is very deep, mystical, it's transformative. It's also an energy of hiding something until the time is right. And it is also an area of life where this person gets feels friction and it's just a very intense, this is the intensity of the area of the birth chart that Scorpio was in, okay? This is where this person will experience intensity, where they will experience transformation, where they will experience trauma, but through that intensity, trauma, and transformation that will be induced through this area of your, their life, it is where they will become masters at it, okay? Because Pluto ultimately is power, okay? And what rules Scorpio is Mars, and Pluto, all right? So think about that. Mars is fighting, Pluto is power, okay? And transformation. Where through fighting, this person acquires power, okay? And where things that happen to them, they transform. However you wanna interpret that, okay? Now, with the third house, third house is your local areas around you, okay? So say you live in an apartment in the Bronx, you live in Harlem, you live in uh, Culver City, California, you live in Los Angeles, California. Wherever you live, it's your local neighborhood, okay? It's where you commute to on your day-to-day -day basis. It's your local Starbucks, it's your local bodega, it's your local liquor store, it's your local grocery store. This is, it's that immediate surroundings of you, okay? And so, with that being said, this is also going to be, um, the family dynamic that you grew in as far as the relation between you and your siblings. It's not the home, it's not the mother, this is you and your relationship with your siblings, how you are with your siblings, okay? Who were you and what was the dynamic between you and your four sisters and brothers? What were you? And you will be the Scorpio version, okay? With that, this is gonna show me that you were the Scorpio sibling, all right? You were the sibling that people were like, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm scared of her or him. We just gonna leave that one alone, all right? You're that, you are that, okay? But now, what happens when third house is in Scorpio or Scorpio's in third house? This is gonna make for someone, for my Virgo risings, and I'm gonna try to not really make it all about the Virgo rising because this is a specific Scorpio in the third house video. Um, and this is also gonna be for people who have Pluto and Mars in the third house. But for Scorpio in the third house, you are going to be someone who is very deep and penetrating with your thoughts and with what you say. You are someone that probably has the advice of all the advice, all right? You are someone when people call up, they can give you two pieces of information and you will already have summed up what that person that you don't even know that they're talking about is, what they are capable of, what their intentions are. They, people don't really even have to give you a lot of information in order for you to know exactly what is going on, all right? And that is over the phone, that's in person, that is just who you are. And you are, this probably really, really, really comes out when you are with your family, all right? When you are with your sisters and brothers, you are probably that sibling that even though everybody's happy and having a good time, you're the one that in your mind, you'll probably play along, which is probably very hard for you, but you are someone that you're going to be very just like, why is everybody happy? How dare they be happy and we're just in this situation like this and we have these unresolved issues and everyone's just so happy and like they're so fake and like I'm gonna be that sibling that's not fake because everyone else is just being so fake and everyone just wants to, you get what I'm saying? You're gonna take on that aura, you are. So if you don't realize that about you, this could be why that is and that's because you have Scorpio in the third house. Scorpio in the third house, it's gonna make for you to be the black sheep of the family. You could be the, the, the I don't wanna say of the family, I wanna say between the siblings, okay? You're gonna be, it's gonna give black sheep energy. It's gonna give the sibling that is always deep and brooding or always is saying something that 
is throwing off the dynamic like and you're probably the sibling that you know they they keep out or that they don't want to invite to the party because when you do come it's an air of you're gonna say something that they don't want you to say. They just wanna keep the peace. And it's not that you don't wanna keep the peace, it's just that you don't wanna be fake and you want to get everything out in the open. And if you can't, then you just feel like I'm being fake and everyone's hiding something from you. You don't like secrets and you will find that your siblings keep a lot of secrets from you. But this placement with that as regards to the siblings, you're just gonna have to understand and accept that you are coming at things from an angle of a, a lens of they are wrong first, they are guilty first before they are innocent. And if you wanna change that dynamic, know that it starts with you, know that it, it, it starts with you to, to kinda give people the benefit of the doubt. Even though you feel things, sometimes you need to play along to get along. And if you wanna get along with your siblings, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're just gonna have to play along to get along. Even though you may know something is wrong, even though you may know that this person is doing this or this person is doing it, let them, let them. They are, this is not, as long as they're not trying to do it to you, as long as they are not trying to inflict this upon you or do these things to you, then you should, I'm gonna call my mom actually, cause she has this and this is what she goes through with her siblings. And now that I'm even sitting here doing this video, I'm just like, whoa, like a lot of, the, I need to call my mom and like let her know this. But yeah, it doesn't have to be that way. You don't always have to come in so aggressive or so Martian or Plutonic, okay? With Mars and Pluto, you're going to be seeking power through you being kind of somewhat subtly aggressive with your siblings, you are. You're just gonna take on that energy and through that lens without you even knowing, all right? So I want you to be careful of that. And if, listen, if they deserve it, if they truly deserve it, then do that. But sometimes it's just gonna be a family gathering where they wanna eat pie and you're like, well, why are they serving cherry pie? When they know that cherry pie is something I don't like. And it's not that deep. You get what I'm saying? You're gonna really wanna dissect things to the, to the T and they don't, just don't need to be that way. But moving on from the siblings, with this, your mind is gonna be very fine tuned into other people's trauma, okay? You're gonna really know what other people's needs. If you are a Virgo rising, this is why Virgos are very critical, okay? Virgos are critical because their Scorpio was in the third house. This is why a Scorpio rising is very critical because they have Scorpio in the third house, okay? And that is gonna make for them to have this very detailed, psychic insight into other people. Have you ever been around a Virgo rising and they just know what you need? They they know how to serve you. They know, um, they, they know how to serve you. And it is because they are pinpointing, they're using their Scorpio in third house to see into the core of the problem. They know exactly what you need and they know how to fix it. They know um, what, they, they can be with you one day out of, of a week or whatever. They could be with you for five minutes, honestly. And they'll go, you know what you need? You need to drink more protein because that's probably why you're sore and why you're tired and why you go into your job and you're angry and you're upset with everyone because actually you need to be drinking protein. You, that's a Virgo rising because their Scorpio is in the third house. Their mind is fine tuned to see into everything in this, this level of detail. With everything they're around, they're gonna see everything into this level of detail that others will never see because their Scorpio is in the third house. I can't stress that enough. So. When they are out, listen, when they are out, when a Scorpio and third houser is out around going from place to place, I wanna say this is a blessing and a curse with this Scorpio and the third house because what makes a Virgo so good is that they are able to see into the underlining currents of what people need, all right? But at the same time, they can be a little bit too aggressive with it. They can be a little bit too penetrating with it to the point where it, it makes them come off a certain way or be seen a certain way that like, oh, you're too critical of others. You are too, you're, look, you are strumming my pain with your fingers and I didn't ask you for that. I did not ask you to tell me that I'm a certain way because I didn't ask you that. You know, like it's, you're gonna give that energy of like, you're gonna tell people what needs to be said so that they can help, so that you can help transform them. But sometimes people are not gonna ask you for that. And it's like, 
everyone doesn't want to be seen in that way and that's why Virgos get the air or Virgo risings get the air of you know being critical but it's you are critical because you are able to see into the core of a situation and sometimes what you say um, and how you think can be very penetrating and very disarming for others because they're like I didn't ask you for that now in the situation in the event that people ask you do away with it give it get, give them what you know they need all right but sometimes people are not going to want to know that very deep and insightful information to that core because when you do it unless you have Venus in that third house it's going to come out very aggressive I've been around a Virgo rising friend who they'll say stuff and although I know that they want to help all they all know they want to help. I'm just like, damn, did you have to say it like that? Did you did you have to tell me about me like that? How are you gonna tell me about me like that? Like, but that's because Mars is ruling Scorpio and Pluto is ruling Scorpio. So it's gonna give that flavor of just like, ouch, like damn. Okay, relax, I'll I'll drink my protein. Damn. Okay, so be aware of that. Now, if this sounds like you, let me know, Scorpio in the third house. Are you someone that sees into the core of people, situations, places, and things? Are you like this with your family members and your siblings foremost? Is it hard for you to see the good in your siblings? Is it hard? I need you to really um, tell me right now, okay? Tell me if that's you. You know, now that I'm doing this video, my mom has Scorpio in the third house and my brother does too and I'm seeing the dynamics play out between how my mom is with her family members and how I am with my brother, you know? I can tell that being on the other end of that, although I know my brother has very deep and insightful things, he may come at it from an area and an angle that is very penetrating and is very harsh. And so that causes me, even though I love him, to stay away because it can be a little frightening at times. It can be it can be very just like I don't want to deal with that. I don't know I don't know how this person is feeling today even though they feel great and they feel well. And now that I think about it, I also have another friend who is a Virgo rising who they are like this with their siblings as well. They love their siblings, but there's a rift there because they have been either ousted or black sheeped or this way and I know you mean well. I know you mean well my Virgo rises because you do mean well. But try not to be this way with your siblings, you know? Try to come at it from an angle that you do with your friends or that you do with your job and really try to get on that level, that emotional level. Don't take your emotions or vulnerability with your siblings as a way of losing power because you can fall into that territory. If that if they see you, if your if your siblings see you for who you really are that maybe you'll lose power, maybe you'll lose your angle of control. So allow allow your siblings to love you, allow there to be peace, okay? I'm not saying that you're responsible for the peace because it takes two to tango in every situation, but just try, you know? Um, continue to be insightful though with your mind, continue to be penetrating, continue to see into the undercurrents of what people need because with this information you can be someone who is a very good writer, a very good communicator, a very, um, what you do with your voice and what you do with that that knowledge and that insightfulness, you can do to change people for the better, okay? You can, you can write out meal plans, you can be a judge, you can be a great lawyer, you can be a great singer or artist anything you do with your voice and your mind you are going to be someone that can be very um you can offer change for people on a very microscopic soul level so continue to be that way i'm just giving you some forewarnings and some um you know potholes along the way that you can be looking out for when you see these things play out you can go oh i see okay that's the angle that my siblings are coming from oh now i see why people certain when i do try to help people look at me a certain way this is why try to Offer what you offer in maybe a better, in a in a more balanced, graceful way. Try a, try a little bit more tact when you do it because although you mean well, it can come off very, it's, it can come off very Martian and Plutonian, all right? And, and this could also be a good thing, okay? With Scorpio in the third house, you can be someone that is, it can err on the territory of a brilliant mind you are you are I don't want to say this but you could be someone who a manipulator can't get over on you because you've already you you're already manipulating him all right you already know you're like look I got this in the bag brother you better go find another idiot to deal with because I'm not the one you're very 
cunning in your mind, okay? You can be very cunning and very, very good and sharp with your mind and what you're thinking you can keep to yourself. But without further ado, let me know if this is you in the comments, okay? Let me know if this sounds like you and if this is you, give me a planet that your Scorpio in the third house is in. Don't give me an angle, don't give me a degree, don't give me five planets that your Scorpio in the third house is in, okay? Um, give me one planet that you are very curious about because y'all be getting very sneaky in those comments trying to get little bird charts out of me but give me one planet that you're iffy about or that you really curious about and i will write back to you what you could be experiencing with that scorpio in the third house okay but that was my video i really do hope that you got some encouragement and inspiration from this unique placement and i will see y'all in the next video all right y'all have a great day by get into Scorpio in the fourth house, all right? Scorpio in the fourth house is going to be reserved for my Leo Risings, and this is gonna make for a placement who probably had a very um, intense upbringing, a very intense mother or household that they were up under, okay? A lot of changes happen within their dynamic, within their household, okay? So with that being said, um, Scorpio in the birth chart is going to really give me the energy of someone who is um, like with Scorpio in the birth chart. Rewind. But before we go ahead and unlock that really deep placement, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are better able to understand the information we've been given and we can read other people's birth charts because remember this channel is about learning the language of the stars and i don't want us just to be confined to scorpio in the fourth house okay i want us to be able to read our our friends birth charts and our mother's birth charts and this birth chart and that birth chart and that way when we're out in the world if we separate the aspects we can be out there and when you are reading someone you can go okay jupiter james told me scorpio meant this and jupiter james told me that the fourth house meant this and you can do more with the information and you're not just confined to scorpio in the fourth house okay so with that being said, Scorpio in the birth chart for me is going to show me um, where traumatic things happen to the person, where a lot of transformation happen with, um, in this person's life. Wherever Scorpio is in the birth chart, in this instance, the fourth house, it's going to show me where a lot of change happened, where there was a lot of danger that was maybe felt or where there's a lot of intense happenings or frictions and things like that, okay? So, and it's through that, that this person builds power and security, all right? Now, with, with, the, um, with the fourth house, the fourth house is going to be the area of life of the mother, okay? This is gonna show me where the, the mom is and how she was with you and the care that she gave you. What was her nurturing style towards you? What was the dynamic between you and your mother, all right? And that is what the fourth house is gonna show me. It's also gonna show me how you are in your adult life, how you are away from your job. When you clock out of work and you go home and you close the door, who are you at home? This is what the fourth house is gonna show me, all right? And yeah, so now what happens when we mix the two? What happens when we throw Scorpio in the fourth house? Scorpio in the fourth house is gonna give me the energy of someone who probably had, it could be one or two ways, okay? It could be the opposite end of the spectrum a little bit, all right? And, or it could be a mix of all of it. This gives me an energy of, first and foremost, a very intense and powerful mom. The mom, herself is very intense she's very powerful in her own right for whatever reason for whatever reason she has a lot of intensity about her a lot of things happen to your mom whether that be uh she goes out and there's a lot of fights where she goes out and there's just things happening to the mom all right um the mom could be very deep very spiritual, very emotionally passionate. This can make for a mother who was like that with you, okay? You maybe have argued a lot with your mom. You probably argue so much with your mother, but the bond is very, very deep. The bond between you and your mother is very deep and is very penetrating and it is very just like, you're, it, it, it's a lot. You know, it is. It's very intense with your mother. Now, the relationship with your mother will develop and it will transform over time for good or for bad. This is a very general video, so there's no way that I could like, you know, hit the nail on the head for everyone out there. But what I do know is that the relationship with your mother is very intense. You guys are not fake with each other. You and your mom keep it real with each other, you know. 
Um, your mom could also hide a lot of things from you as well. Although she's keeping it real with you, there are things about your mom that she may hide things from you. Things may be hidden or the, the relationship again is just very intense and very just, there's a lot of friction, a lot of arguments, a lot of just intense emotions are there. You know when you think about your mom, there's some passion and some just intensity around your mom. Now, in your daily life, when you go out or when you, actually when you don't go out, at home, you probably love low light at home. You love to just be left alone. Like you are someone that I would imagine that you don't really have a large online presence. Like you really find it hard to allow the outside world in on your life. You don't want people to know where you live. You don't want people to be on the know in your life. When people ask you at work, what do you do? Because no one knows. You may speak in general terms. You're like, oh, I, I hang out. Oh, I do things like you want, you don't really want people to, to know. With this, Scorpio, Pluto, and Mars rule Scorpio. And so this is almost like having Pluto on the IC, okay? Meaning that for you, what you remember about your childhood was danger and insecurity. And by insecurity, I don't mean superficial insecurity. I mean insecurity in the way of like, you don't know what's happening next. You don't know, you know, if it's safe to be you yet. You don't know if it's safe. You don't know. Like, and so you kind of put yourself on guard. You're on guard and you kind of have to keep who you are to yourself. You have to stay on guard. You have to kind of see things as like a fly on the wall just to see if anything's gonna jump out or pop off. And so with that, it's gonna give you that energy as you grow up. As you grow up, you're gonna find that people, although they wanna hang out with you and although in your career, you're probably this ball of light and this ball of energy and you're just good and all these things, you're gonna find that when you go home, you just wanna be left alone. You just want to just do your own thing. You don't really want people pulling at your energy or, or doing too much with you. You understand like you're gonna just want your own space and you're, you're, you are going to want to find power insecurity okay at home in your home life and that means that if you gotta hide a little bit if you gotta be a little bit aloof if you gotta not tell people exactly where you live or what you do when you go home then so be it and this doesn't mean that you're gonna have a traumatic adult life this you look you could have with fourth house um with fourth house scorpio you could have the most beautiful private life you could be on yachts you could be doing this you could do that but the world wouldn't know because for you, it's like revealing too much about your personal life makes you feel insecure. And again, I'm not talking about in the superficial way. I'm talking about in the way of like, you just don't want to let the world know your cards because if they, if people, it's like this, if people saw the nice home that you're living in, then you feel that people will treat you differently than the way you want to be treated. Okay. And you don't want that with Virgo being with Scorpio being in the fourth house okay and it could be that way with you you're a very private person and you just want to keep things to yourself and you only reveal things to people when you feel safe when you want things to be revealed revealing too much for you is like in your personal life is something you will not do too much okay so if that sounds like you let me know if this sounds like you at all are you someone that had a very intense deep emotional maybe argumentative, transformative relationship with your mother. Your relationship with your mother will transform over time many times. Is that you, did you and your mother go through a lot of traumatic events together? A lot of moments where you guys had to be very deep with each other. Is that you? Um, and also let me know in your private life, are you someone that is just very private? You take privacy very seriously. You are not someone that allows people into your personal life very easily you know if, if you're letting someone into your apartment or your home it means you really really trust them you really you're, you're you trust the person is that you also while you're at it can you let me know in the comments right now let me know a planet that your Scorpio in the fourth house is in. Don't give me five planets, don't give me a degree, don't give me an opposition or an angle. Give me one planet, cause y'all like to get sneaky in those comments. Um, give me one planet that your Scorpio in the fourth house is in and I'll let you know how that planet could be playing out, all right? Give me a planet that you're very curious about with 
your Scorpio in the fourth house and I will write back what you can be experiencing with that planet, all right? And if you don't have any planets within your Scorpio in the third house, just know in, in the fourth house, just know that that is because you are being given free reign to focus on just the things that I've said in this video, that the universe is saying, look, we're not gonna give this person any more on their plate in this area than they've already got, all right? In this area, you are free to focus on and ruminate and figure out and work through what you need to work through with just Scorpio in the fourth house, okay? So it's not bad that you don't have any planets in there. It just means that the universe doesn't wanna make it complicated for you. Lucky you. Yeah, you just get to focus on what you already need to focus on in that area of life. So I hope that this um, video really gave you some inspiration and encouragement. I do will say though, with Scorpio in the fourth house, I want you to try to open up in your personal life, okay? Try your best to be someone that although you have power in your home life and in your stability, I want you to be able to not worry so much because sometimes you can worry about your stability a little bit. And when it comes to your mother, understand that for whatever reason, you have um, a karmic duty to your mother. And there is a lot of things that need to be worked out. And if you work it out, you can transform it. Scorpio shows me that the relationship with your mother, whether it's good or or bad can always be transformed. It can always go through an evolutionary phase, okay? So whatever your relationship is with your mother right now, I want you to be able to know that you have the power to transform it, all right? Um, because you could be also a very good mother when you grow up. When you grow up and you have children, you are gonna be someone that ha is very good at this. You're, because if you heal it and you acquire the lessons that you need to acquire from this area of your life, you are gonna be able to only pass good things to your offspring, okay? You're gonna be someone that is a powerhouse. You're gonna be the, the mom of all moms, the dad of all dads with this placement, okay? So, with that being said, I will see y'all on the next video and y'all have a great day. Bye. To Scorpio in the fifth house. Now, this is gonna be for my Cancer Risings or my Leo Risings, I believe, but um, I believe it's gonna be for my Cancer Risings and this is going to be someone who has a big strong hold on their creativity. And through their creativity, they can offer healing and transformation to the people that are in receptivity of their creations, okay? But before we go ahead and really dive deep into that placement, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we're not just confined to Scorpio in the fifth house, okay? That way when we're out reading our friends' charts or our, our friends' charts or our brother's charts or this chart or that chart, we're better able to go, okay, Jupiter James told me Scorpio means this and Jupiter James told me that Scorp fifth house means this and that way we can do more with the information we've been given. Given, okay, because that's what this channel is about. I'm trying to help us all remember what the language of the stars are, all right? So, for me, Scorpio in the birth chart is gonna show me where the transformational qualities of the house that Scorpio is sitting in are present, okay? It's gonna show me where this person may um, be traumatized, where they may receive a lot of magnetism and they can be very magnetic magnetic in this area of life. This person could probably be um, someone wherever Scorpio is pointing to where this person will have a lot of transformations, all right? Where this person will also serve as a transformational force within that area. They will have power, control, and magnetism within that area of life, all right? The fifth house, the fifth house is ruled by Leo and Leo is going to um, offer energy in the fifth house of creativity. It is going to be, um, it's going to be someone or in the fifth house is going to be your romantic life. It's going to be uh, your fun. Like when you call up your girls or you call up the guys and you say, let's go out. This is the energy that you have when you go out. When you go out, this is the energy that you have in this area of life, okay? It's your romantic partners, it's the energy you have when you go out, and it is how you are when it comes to your creativity that you showcase, okay? 
So what happens when Scorpio is in the fifth house? Scorpio in the fifth house is gonna give me someone who is very magnetic. When they go out and they're having fun, they are going to be someone that grabs the attention of other people. You are gonna be someone that has a lot of power when you go out and you have fun. You are gonna be someone who could be very good at motivating people as well. Someone who is very good at teaching and influencing people because when you combine plutonic forces with the sun, you can motivate people's ego. You can help people's ego. You can help transform the ego of others. You, because you have a strong ego, ego, you're gonna be someone that has a very strong ego and the thing that you offer the world, the creativity forces that you offer the world, you are going to seek to transform people on a very soul level. You are gonna seek to transform people by whatever you do. You're not just gonna do it to do it. Like if you're a dancer, you're gonna wanna be a dancer that influences other dancers. You're gonna be a dancer that if you go out and you do the thing you do, you're not just gonna wanna dance. You're gonna wanna dance. You are going to want to do something that, that changes the world. Whatever that creativity thing that you do, you're gonna wanna change the world. You're gonna wanna leave your mark through the area of your creativity, all right? And you have the power to do that. You are gonna be very magnetic, very dynamic in this area of your life. You are also gonna be someone that probably wants creative control of the things you do. You're not just gonna want your image out there to be out there. Like when you um, show something off or you do something, you are not just gonna wanna do it to do it. You're gonna wanna be the best at it. You're not just gonna wanna be mediocre. This is gonna make for people who are not mediocre in the things that they present. So, and depending on the planets that are in this house, it's gonna show me what exactly the things that you could be presenting. But with that being said, you're creative as a whole. You are going to wanna have creative control. And you're gonna be like this in your dating life as well. You're gonna be the one in the relationship that wants the power. You are not gonna be someone that just lets things ride or no. You're gonna wanna have power and control in your relationships. And your relationships, funny enough, although you wanna have power and you're gonna be a force for control in your relationships, the people that you attract are actually gonna change you. You know, you're gonna think that you're changing them or they're gonna change you. And it could be for good, it could be for bad, but I do know that after every relationship, you're gonna gain some wisdom, you're gonna gain some insight, and you're gonna transform after every relationship that you encounter romantically, all right? So yeah, with that being said, are you someone that really wants creative control with the things that you offer to the world? You're gonna be very intelligent as well. Is that you? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, can you let me know a planet that you have in your fifth house, all right? Don't get sneaky. Don't give me like eight planets. Don't give me a stellium. Don't give me the grease. Just give me a planet that you're curious about in your fifth house, Scorpio. And I will write back what you could be experiencing with that particular planet in your fifth house, okay? And how to work through that or not. But my biggest advice to my Scorpio fifth housers are, I don't want you to be afraid of your own talent, okay? Because you could be someone that is extremely talented. You could be someone that you also don't wanna offer your talent until you feel that you have the ins and outs of the thing that you are gonna present. If you cannot win, if you cannot be the best, if you cannot have great influence in the thing that you want to show or the thing you know you have, you're going to keep it to yourself. You're not going to really want to, you know, give it away yet or show it off. But I want you to be able to just do it because you have it in you and you will learn these things over time. You will gain control and gain power through the creativity that you offer the world, okay, and that you offer people. So do that, all right? Also know that you are extremely intelligent. Your intelligence is penetrating. You could be a jack of all trades with this placement because you have the area of your creativity down pat. You have, the, you have Pluto in the fifth house, meaning that whatever you do, whatever you present, whatever you are thinking about, this is the house of your intelligence. You're gonna be very, very smart. You're gonna be very cunning in your creativity and whatever you create, you're gonna know the ins and outs of it, all right? Now, when it comes to your relationships, you are not going to want very superficial romantic partners. You are gonna want partners who are just as deep as you are, who are just as penetrating as you are. You are gonna wanna love on a soul, soul level. And 
you can attract people like that. You can attract very scorpionic people, people who are very powerful, people who have power in their own right. And so when you go out, I know you probably go on the air, it's either one or the other. It's either you've got your arms folded and you're looking around and you don't want to interact with people, or you're someone that's like, look, I don't give a damn. I'm going out and I'm having the most fun. I'm gonna be the one having the most fun. You are, you're like that. It's either you want to be the one having the most fun at the party or the one not messing with nobody. You're just like, these are not my people. How dare they receive my fun? Like they don't deserve me to have as much fun as I could have here. Like you're gonna be like that. You're gonna really be the judge and executioner of who gets to deserve your fun? Who gets to see you at your lightest and your brightest? You're gonna be like that. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep it to yourself. So yeah, if that sounds like you, let me know in the comments below. Let me know a curious planet that you have. If you don't have any planets in your fifth house, know that it doesn't mean that it's not gonna be good or that it's bad. Just know that the universe has said, you've got enough on your plate. You just get to focus on the things that I've named in this video. That's it. You just get to focus on that. You don't have any distractions or any other things pulling or vying at your attention to make it complicated. You just get to focus on what Scorpio in the fifth house is in this life, all right? So I really do hope that this gave you some inspiration and some encouragement within your unique placement within your birth chart. If you would like for me to do any other videos regarding a different placement within your um, your birth chart, let me know and I will get that as a part of the queue for you and I will get that up and running, all right? Y'all have a great day. Bye. To Scorpio in the sixth house, all right? Scorpio in the sixth house is gonna give me the energy of someone who um, probably really has a grasp and a really good hold on their day-to-day -day life, all right? They're gonna be someone who really researches about health and their diet and what is the best diet for them and the ins and outs of every little ingredient they put in their bodies and more. But before we go ahead and really dive deep into the aspect, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we're not just confined to Scorpio in the sixth house, all right? That way when we're out reading our birth charts or reading other people's birth charts, we can be like, okay, Jupiter James told me Scorpio means this and six house means that and now we can do more with the individual knowledge separated out there in the world than we are to do with just Scorpio in the sixth house all right so with Scorpio Scorpio in the birth chart is going to show me where the deep penetrating forces of the person may be all right where this person has a very strong grasp hold on this area of their life where this person may have secrecy around this life uh, part of their life wherever scorpio is in the birth chart it's going to also show me where this person seeks transformation and will transform and where this person may experience trauma in order to become a master at this area of life all right so with the sixth house sixth house is going to show me it's going to be ruled by virgo and it's going to be ruled by mercury and it's going to also be telling me where um, the day-to-day -day life and the service of this person may be, all right? So what this person does for work, what their diet looks like, what their schedule is, what they do on their day-to-day, -day, and also it's gonna show me how they are with their colleagues, okay? Who are they in their job and how are colleagues with them, all right? So with that being said, what happens when Scorpio goes into the sixth house? Scorpio in the sixth house is going to give me the energy of someone who is has a very big grasp on their day to day. They're going to want to be very good at it. They're going to really want to get up every day and, and you know, they're going to want to do things right and be very good at their day to day. They're going to want to have their schedule down. They're going to want to have their routine down. They're going to want to have their diet down. They're going to have a lot of control in this area and they're not going to let up. They're not going to be someone who, you know, within their diet, they're going to cheat or they're going to know they're going to really, really, really want to know the ins and outs of their day to day. You know, why, why am I waking up? at this hour why am i eating things that i'm eating why am i running on the treadmill they're going to want to know the why and once they know the why that's only going to give them more information to do it to a level that is better than others in their job as well they're going to want to be someone who is offering change to whatever they do whatever they do they're going to have a lot of energy and they're going to want to do these things in a very they're gonna to wanna to offer change in whatever they're in, okay? So they're gonna maybe wanna transform a situation or transform a person or transform a problem. They're gonna be that. Whatever they do, they're gonna to wanna to be offering change 
on a deep, deep level, okay? And they're, wanna, they're gonna wanna do it to the best. They're gonna wanna be the best. They're gonna wanna be the one that has the most control. And this is how they're gonna be in their career. I mean, or in the job that they give, okay? And in their schedules and in their routines. With Scorpio in the sixth house, you could have people, you could have like hidden enemies. You know, you could have enemies in the workplace or people who may not agree with you, but you never, you will never know who they are. It's like, it's weird. It's like, you won't really, can't, you can't put a face to the people that are probably opposed to you or who don't agree with you. You just know that someone does. You're like, I know someone in that boardroom don't like me, but I can't figure out who it is. I know someone in corporate does not like me, I know it's someone, but I don't know who it is. You'll be like that within your career. But I will know that the service that you give and with your day-to-day -day schedules and routines, you're gonna wanna be someone that has a lot of control. Now you may, through the service that you give, you may find that through the diets that you, you acquire, it offers transformation. So this could give me people who may take their diets to an extreme end, you know? So be careful of that. You could be someone that has an eating disorder or things like that, you know? So be careful of that because remember, with Scorpio, an already intense planet, and you throw that into a Virgo-driven house of your diet and your workout routines and your schedules, you could be people who are susceptible to having very intense diets that can harm them. You could have an intense schedule where you're, you're not sleeping, where you don't get enough sleep, where you're up and you're running yourself ragged. So be very careful of that. Don't, don't err on the side of intensity because this could offer, you could have a very intense schedule, a very intense diet, a very intense service that you are giving. The industry that you're in is very intense, okay? And so I really want you to be aware of that be cognizant that sometimes you can take it to the extremes okay and i don't yeah and, and you can do that without knowing it's just you feel like that's just your normal setting it is your that is your normal setting on who you are but i want you to be conscious of it all right so if this sounds like you can you let me know are you someone who has a very intense day-to-day -day, you have an intense service that you give and the things that you do you want to transform the situations and things that you're around sometimes you can nitpick the things that you eat, you research, and you're researching this, and you're researching that, and you wanna research, research, research on what you are doing, and what you're eating, and what you're working out on, if it's enough, can you let me know if this is you? And while you're at it, can you let me know a planet that your sixth house has with Scorpio in it, and I will write back to you what you could be experiencing with that, okay? Um, let me know what that could be for you, and I will write back. But I really do hope that you got some inspiration and encouragement with this planet and some insight. I will say that this is a very deep and penetrating aspect and you could be someone that again is very intense in your day to day. Try to take breaks. Try to go easy on yourself. Don't be so, you know, on guard all the time, especially within your work or your service. Uh, you could be that employee that is always on guard. You don't know who's against you. You don't know, you know, what's happening. You could be very just skeptical at times. Um, continue to be this way. Use that energy where you can use it to come out successful. Use that penetrating, very transformative energy in areas that you know will serve you, but try to be cognizant of where that energy can go in areas that can be harming or damaging and I would say that that could be in areas of your diet and your your schedules okay try to if you need to wake up at a reasonable hour you need to sleep do that don't be someone that is you know closing the shop at 3 a.m. and then you're waking up at 5 a.m. don't come on you could be susceptible to that but be cognizant of that all right so that was my video for this placement I will see y'all in the next video I am wishing you all the good things in life and I will see y'all bye into Scorpio in the seventh house. Now Scorpio in the seventh house is gonna give me the energy of someone who likes very powerful people and who wants to be in relationships with people who are deep, transformative, and who are also very complex. But before we go ahead and 
um, dive deep into that aspect. Let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are better able to do more with the knowledge we've been given and we're not just confined to Scorpio in the seventh house, okay? That way when we're out reading other people's charts, we can go, okay, J Jupiter James told me that Scorpio meant this and Jupiter James told me that the seventh house meant that, you know? And that way we can do more with each one of those things and go out and like play with those things and discover those things in other areas of the birth chart and in other areas of life, okay? So with Scorpio, Scorpio for me is always going to show me the mysterious, the, the very deep, the very hidden, the very intense and transformative aspects of a placement, okay? Wherever Scorpio is sitting in or playing out under, it's going to show me where this person will also endure trauma in order to grow and become wildly adept at that area okay very it's gonna they're gonna master this area it's almost like a baby saturn in a way you know because pluto is a little baby saturn um causing transformation where it may to serve the person for the better okay now with that being said scorpio is also ruled by pluto and it is ruled by mars and pluto is a very hidden transformative planet and so and mars is a very aggressive actionary planet okay this is where the person is going to with those things combined and scorpio playing out again it's going to have action aggression towards people and people towards them okay or just in that area of life all right wherever scorpio is pointing now seventh house is going to always be ruled by libra and venus and it's going to also be um the energy of relationships and partnerships and business contracts anything you sign on the dotted line of a relationship or a partnership that is what uh the seventh house is going to be ruling okay so with that being said what happens when we throw scorpio into the seventh house okay scorpio in the seventh house is going to give me energy of somebody who attracts very powerful people and very important um powerful transformative relationships okay even if that person themselves doesn't hold a lot of power which they will or which they may the person in the situation the dynamic in which their partnerships always um evolve into is that it's going to have an air of scorpionic to it okay whether that means that you get with people in secret whether that be that the the relationship in a whole can be seen as something that's very intense you know you're probably always calling up your friends and your family you're like you know this job that i just got into this this partnership that i just got into with this company like you know they're they are taking me through the ringer is this happening and that happening and there's probably so much turnover that's happening within that business that you've acquired or that that partner that you've acquired okay and now and that's the same trend when it comes to the relationships that you find yourself in you know you're not going to be attracted to people who are even keel and just like you know willy-nilly no you're going to go for the ones that are deep and dark and mysterious you're going to go for those people that have a kind of like a chip on their shoulder or, or some type of complexity that you feel you need to work through in order to get to the depths of that person and that person is going to feel that way about you and you're going to really like intense deep relationships with people you are not gonna like the superficial you are not gonna like people for their money or for this or for that you're gonna or for their status or for their looks like you're gonna really like people for their depth you know the more depth someone has the more you're gonna like them and it's just gonna just so happen that they are going to be plutonic and and be very intense and they're going to serve to change your life and you're going to change their life and it's just going to be a very intense situation and you being this could be for my taurus risings but for you you are going to be just that person who you feel that you have such an even killness about you that you're going to want a little excitement you know you're going to want to shake things up and why why not with how um consistent and persistent and just very you know your your life is very stable and and opposites attract in this in in life just in general you know the the bird the bird chart especially when i get into the seventh house it really shows me that opposites in fact do attract and you always find yourself in situations that are opposite to your nature you know if anyone were to ask you as a taurus rising that you know who you are they go oh my god you are so dependable you are just so consistent you're even keel you're never anyone i need to worry about 
But then once you get into a relationship, it's like shit hits the fan. That's because, you know, you, you need a little excitement and you feel like you're the perfect person to take on this scorpionic figure and like, you know, bring them their head from out of the clouds or get them out of the closet or get them from under their deep, dark rock that they are comfortable in and you want to be their comfort for them. So with that being said, you're going to really, the the whatever relationship you find yourself in is going to transform you whether that be a business partnership whether that be a romantic partnership or a marriage it's going to transform you and it's going to be very intense whatever you involve yourself in one-to-one -one relationship wise is going to be intense and people are going to be intense with you and you probably don't want to be with people unless you feel a love at first sight or best friends in an instant like it's either love or hate it's either you like people or you don't it's either people vibe with you or they don't and like you're gonna be that way it's love at first sight it's best friends at first sight it's oh my god i want you on my team at first sight it's gonna be like that and so if this sounds like you let me know are you someone that really only wants to involve yourself with very deep transformational people who have depth and who have a certain soul that you can feel from them is that is that you are you someone that also may attract people while they are going through a transitionary phase in their life like you probably meet people or businesses or your life partner while they were about to move to a different country or they just got a new job or um, things like that like you meet people when they are in a transitionary period in their life of transformation you know they could either have scorpionic energy they could be going through a transformation on their own when you meet them the company that you involve yourself with could be going through a, a transformation maybe they um are downsizing or maybe they are about to just go to scale and they call you on to help them scale up their business you know you always are you're, you're attracted to people who are going through a transformation and who also have a lot of power and a lot of depth. And when you partner with them, they're gonna change your life too and it's gonna be very intense. And so if that sounds like you, let me know. If that sounds like you or if that hits the nail on the head. Um, and if it does or if it doesn't, just let me know what planet your you may have in your Scorpio seventh house, okay? Because sometimes the planet will also show me what else you could be experiencing in that area of your life. It'll also change the dynamic a little bit. Um, and if you don't have Scorpio in the seventh house, don't be afraid, don't think that that's bad. Just know that the universe is saying, look, you've got enough on your plate. You just need to focus on Scorpio in the seventh house in its basic form and you are free to just figure that out and work through that in this lifetime. It doesn't mean it's good or that it's bad or, or if it's less powerful or, or least potent, it just means that the universe is saying, you don't need any distractions in this area. I'm not gonna make this area any more complex for you. And you just get to focus on what Scorpio in the seventh house means in this life. So what I've said in this video is what you just get to focus on with no distractions, all right? Um, my biggest advice and my biggest encouragement for my Scorpio and the seven houses out there are going to be, you know, I really want you to be able to, um, I don't know, I, I don't feel like this is a bad placement per se or this placement really needs any encouragement. My biggest thing though would probably be to really look out for yourself. Try not to get into relationships with people who maybe want to use you for your stability forces or who know that you're going to be there when a rainy day comes try to really vet out people who although they are powerful and although they are you know um going through transitionary forces that maybe they can reciprocate that energy for you as well can they be stable you know pick someone who has a nice balance don't allow people to just kind of use your 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 very consistent energy for granted all right because you are you're you're one of those people that i feel are the salts of the earth with taurus in the first house you're those people that are just very consistent and you're very even keel and nothing really frightens you nothing really like shakes you and so two scorpionic people or scorpionic companies or people who are in transition know that you are the perfect thing that people want they need someone to lean on or a rock a taurus rising to kind of help them so if that is so I want you to also look at an angle of, okay, if, if I'm being that for you and you need that, there needs to be of some type of gratitude or a thank you or just some respect there. You know, don't allow people to run over you, which I'm sure you probably don't have a good time with, but I want you to know your value. You know, your value is seen and it is 
heard here on this channel with you right now. I know your value within all this, but know that you will find a partner who is at the end of the day when you are using your discernment and you are very cognizant of what is going on, you know, maybe after this video you understand exactly what happens, you will find partners who just want to come in and love you to your core and love you at your deepest and love you for you and they're just going to be so tender and so passionate with you and it'll be love at first sight and they will only seek to help you as well in the ways that can you can be helped and that is for for me that is when things are the most balanced. Like, yes, of course, you can be there for others, but can others be there for you? And that's, even though you may not need it, even though you may say you not need it, even though you may have a strong posture about yourself and you've got your ducks in a row, everyone needs help. Everyone, you still need a shoulder, okay? And if you will know the person's for you when that scorpionic figure is asking you, hey, what do you need, okay? So, um, I love that. I hope that this video really encouraged you and gave you some insight to this unique placement. Um, if you have a different placement that you would like for me to cover within your birth chart that is not Scorpio in the seventh house, write it down in my comments and I will be sure to put that in my queue as a part of the videos that I will get out for you guys. But until my next video, I will see y'all. I'm wishing good things for you and on behalf of you, if you need a birth chart, let me know and I will see y'all. Bye. But today we're going to get into Scorpio in the 8th house. Now this is a very deep and sexual placement and could serve as someone who can be very mystical in their own right. But before we go ahead and really dive deep into this very deep, dark placement, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are better able to do more with the information that we've been given and uh, we can do more with it. That way when we're out reading our friends' charts or our mom's charts or our family's charts, we can go, okay, Jupiter James told me that Scorpio meant this and the 8th house meant that. And now you can do more with that energy in separate areas of the birth chart and with different combinations. That way, again, we can awaken the astrologer within ourselves, all right? And I'm here to show you that. So with Scorpio, for me, Scorpio as an astrologer is always going to show me the, the deep, hidden, and mysterious forces that we all carry within our lives. You know, it's also going to show me where this person may endure transformations and trauma in order to gain wisdom and then transform and become a master or an adept person or wisdom or creation in that area of their life, okay? This is where the universe is going to kind of, again, make trauma happen so that this person can become wiser in that area of life and then become a master in that area, okay? This is also going to show me where things can be intense. You know, if I want to look for where this person experiences intensity or the extremities or like the extreme forces of life, I look for Scorpio. Where does this person, um, where are things hidden? For this person or where does this thing this person want control where does this person experience um somewhat a slight magic touch it but scorpio will give different things for different people okay depending on the house that it's in but now the eighth house the eighth house is all of the things i just described okay but to elaborate a little bit further Sc scorpio rules this house okay Sc scorpio rules the eighth house and scorpio for, um the eighth house for me i like to call is the um it is the taboo subjects that we don't bring up with our family okay or that we don't bring up with our parents at the dinner table when we go visit them at home okay and what don't we bring up with our family at the dinner table we don't bring up very dark subjects we don't bring up the things that hurt us or the things that we don't like you know it's like or we don't we don't bring up magic we don't bring up sex we don't bring up taxes we don't bring up other people's money and other people's resources we don't bring up magic and the occult those subjects are the eighth house okay i like to say that those are the subjects we don't bring up with our parents all right we just we just keep things light all right so what happens when scorpio goes into the eighth house so first and foremost scorpio in the eighth house is going to be at home here so this is for my aries rising they are going to have scorpio in the eighth house or anyone who has pluto and mars a combination of pluto and mars in the eighth house is going to serve as that energy but more so my aries risings and for anyone who has scorpio in the eighth house this is going to be for you okay so with Scorpio in the eighth house, it being at home here, this is gonna mean that for you, those areas of your life that you want to hide, you're very good at hiding them. You know, you're very good at being, um, you keep set your sex life to yourself. You are not very outwardly expressed with it, but you are very adept 
when it comes to doing it when you get down to it you know when you get down to it i bet people are like oh my god that was the best uh -uh -uh i've ever had in my life when it comes to you getting around to do it with people you are going to be someone that that energy is very potent that energy of secrecy is going to be very potent for you it's going to be very um you're going to transform at the appropriate times in your life things are going to happen in your life that you will happen and transform you know with this placement this placement gives me very much like iphone out of the packaging energy nothing complex really happens here Things will happen when they need to happen, but it's not going to be a conglomeration of two opposing energies coming into this, okay? So you will be adept at acquiring other people's money. You will be adept at sex. You will be uh, moderately okay with the transformations in your life. When things do happen in your life, you will be able to handle them. You will be able to handle the deep, dark subjects in life. With an Aries rising, you know, if you are an Aries rising, you are going to be the model human you're going to be the the first they call aries risings like the first human because you are going to be following the path of the normal birth chart the default out of the packaging birth chart and so when things happen in this area when your eighth house gets activated you know when you are doing eighth house subjects when you are talking about these things or these things happen that you encounter which are sex and taboo and these things you're going to be good at it and it's not going to shake you up and it's not going to be something that stops you in your tracks so this could be again someone who has a slight psychic flair to their personality they're going to know things they're going to be you know secretive but not too secretive you're just going to be very um you're going to keep those things and those subjects in a pocket of yours that is in a good area and in a good place in its life and it will come out when it needs to come out it's so when it's time to have sex that's when you have sex when it's time to talk about those things you'll talk about those things but and you're not gonna bring those things to light in in any inappropriate way you're gonna be very adept in this area okay so this could give for someone who is very psychic who's very good in the bedroom, very skilled at acquiring other people's money. You know, you're very good at handling your taxes. You're very good at handling other people's debts. You are probably someone that wants to help others. You, you are also gonna be someone that when you get in a relationship with someone, you're gonna want it to be deep and dark. You're probably gonna be extremely possessive about your partner. You're going to be someone that wants to bond on a deep level when you do get into relationships with people. Be very cognizant that you could be someone that likes sex a little bit too much. You might err on that side of just being extremely passionate, okay, and very jealous. You're, you're going to have a jealous streak to your personality. You're going to be someone that could be seen as sexy, someone that could be seen as has a lot of power. Again, you are default packaging. If you're an Aries rising, I want you to go through your chart, go through everything that regards your chart. I know I'm not supposed to be talking about this, but as an Aries rising, you are going to be adept in every area of the birth chart. You're going to be good at money. You're going to be good at communication. You're going to be good at, you know, the relationship with your mother and at home. You're going to be good at, you know, anything in the birth chart. You're going to be very good at it because you've got the default um, chart and nothing is very disturbing for you. What I would say and what I would suggest for you, my Scorpio in the eighth house, is tell me a um planet that is in your eighth house okay and i will then be able to really give you a really good analysis on what that could be okay because for me this is very default this is a very default placement for you and the planets if you do have a planet in this house will then show me some of the, com the complexities all right or some of the things that you could be given but you are going to just be very sexual you're going to have a lot of power to yourself your relationships will transform you for the better the people that you do get in relationships with you're going to want to merge on a soul level with the relationships that you find yourself in you're not going to be overtly sexual but when it comes time to be sexual you will be extremely good at it okay and you will also be good at handling other people's money tell me a planet that you're eighth house is in all right and i will write back to you what you could be experiencing with that but overall i i say that you are very lucky if you have scorpio in the eighth house because like i said you're not going to have any issues 
when it comes to the things that I've mentioned. You're not gonna have any distracting forces coming in and trying to disturb you unless you have some planets there. Um, so let me know what planet that you have and I will get back to you in my comments what that could mean for you, all right? But yeah, I really hope that that was it. I'm trying to see if I'm, I can channel anything else and nothing's coming up. But yeah, look in my description below. I will have, you know, I have in my blurbs in my description box some things that like, you know, once I get done with these videos, sometimes I'll cut off a video and I will literally have a download. And I'll be like, oh my God, I wish that I could have put that in the video, but then the, the video is uploaded. So in my description box, I keep a little blurb section where I will always update that section of things I may have missed or things that I have remembered about this placement. And I'll just, you know, write down periodically what that could mean for you, okay? But until then, I really do hope that you got some inspiration and some encouragement and a little bit of insight with this placement. Continue to be yourself, continue to be someone that has these themes of your life come out and play out as they see fit in the appropriate arenas and at the appropriate time and you will always be okay. I love y'all, I'm rooting for you and I will see you on the next video, bye. And Scorpio in the ninth house. Scorpio in the ninth house is going to give me the energy of someone who is in pursuit of higher knowledge and ultimately the understanding of God, okay? And this is going to give me someone who is very, very adept and very masterful with the deep philosophies of the world and their education, okay? But before we go ahead and really dive deep into that aspect, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we can do more with the information we've been given in different areas of our lives that, and we're not just confined to Scorpio in the ninth house, okay? So that way when we're reading our friends' charts or our, our cousins' charts or this chart or that chart, we can go, okay, Jupiter James told me that the ninth house meant this and, and he told me that Scorpio meant that. And now you can do more with Scorpio in a different area. You can do more with ninth house in a different area because that's what this channel is about, right? Like learning and awakening that language that we already know and putting the puzzles together where they may and when they come up in our lives, okay? So, um, Scorpio, Scorpio for me is going to show me where the mysterious forces of life and where mysterious things that may be hidden that we hide from others could be in our lives. It shows me where this person could be researching. It shows me the uh, transformational forces that are playing out in an area of their life. Wherever Scorpio is in the birth chart, it shows me where this person will experience trauma in order to become stronger and to become more adept in that area of life. And it'll be through those traumas that not only do they become adept, but that they also find um, the strength to, to uh, transform, okay? And now, with that, Let's go into the, oh, Scorpio is also ruled by Pluto and it's ruled by Mars, okay? So Mars is an actionary planet. It's also rules fighting, it rules, you know, the, the fire. And Pluto is ruled by the mysteriousness. It's ruled by the obsession. It's ruled by um, the jealousy or the secrecy and mysteriousness. And that is what, when you mix all that up, that's why Scorpio gets the, the rap of being very intense, being very, shrouded in mystery because Pluto is mystery, Mars is aggression, and so that's why Scorpios sometimes get that 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 hate towards them because Mars is playing out. So do you see how it's a mix there? It's a mix of all those energies. When you mix Pluto and Mars together, you have a baby and it becomes what? Scorpio, you see? Okay, now, ninth house. Ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius and it is ruled by Jupiter, all right? This is the luck area of your life. This is where you find luck. This is where you find God. They also say that this is the house of your father, how your father treated you and who your father was. All right, your father is your first guru. Believe it or not, I don't know why I always get this image in my mind, but your first guru is the father who was throwing the frisbee with you on the grass. That's your first guru. You know, he taught you how to throw the frisbee. He taught you how to ride the bike. He taught you how to, you know, be a good father. Who are you in your home? How do you treat the mother? How do you treat people around you? Your father was your first guru, okay? Believe it or not, that whether you want it to be that way or not, for, whether for good or for, for bad, whether your example was exemplary or not, 
they were your first guru okay and so this is what the ninth house is it's the house of gurus the house of father the house of education and the pursuit of knowledge and it is also where the person finds luck in their life where's this person's blessings come from and what is the aura and what is the flavor of their blessings okay it's also rules faraway lands it rules travel and people who don't look like you that's what your ninth house rules all right um and so if we have Scorpio here, let's see what Scorpio does in the ninth house. So with Scorpio in the ninth house, first and foremost, you had a very um, transformative father. You had a father who was very deep with you. You probably had a very intense relationship with your father, whether for good or for bad. The relationship with your father was very deep and emotional, okay? Um, very deep emotions were brought up. Very deep emotions happen when it comes to your father. And when you think about your father, you get very deep emotions, very probably emotions that you stuff deep down because it's so intense whether for good or whether for bad the bond with your father is very intense okay and him being your first guru he probably wanted to be a person that valued and taught you the importance of philosophy he probably would drill it in the ground this could be preacher's daughters preacher's sons this could be people who you know your father was very intense he was an intense figure and a transformative figure and your life and your your relationship with him will grow and change over time it will um but yeah that's the first little tidbit of information if that sounds like you let me know in the comments but yeah that the father was very you know intense he probably would really be aggressive or very um mysterious probably have has a mysterious aura around him and he would he would also be someone that you know when he wants you to learn something he wants you to learn it and it's it's sometimes intense and you're like jesus christ like why does it always have to be so intense like why is he so serious and why is he so like err about it like why can't he ever just be like tender in the things that he wants me to learn but he's shrouded in Scorpio. That's who he is. He has Scorpionic energy. So, and his life will transform over time as well. He probably is someone that, you know, now I'm getting into like birth chart territory, but he's probably someone that he had to travel far away from home to transform his life. And so he probably feels that he needs to teach you those things. You know, he wants to instill the courage to go out and get what's yours and like transform your life. And he could be that type of figure. He could also be someone that, well, yeah, that's that on that. So moving on. Now, when it comes to your philosophies and your higher learning and your education, you are gonna be someone that takes it very seriously. You are probably someone that had very intense and extreme occurrences happen within your college career or with when you do venture out or want to find out the higher truths and the higher realms of life you probably get very intense gurus very people who want you to learn be very careful of like uh cults be very careful of um getting into situations where you are doing a little too much you know where you are taking it to the extreme because wherever Scorpio is you could take that theme to the extreme you could take learning to the extreme you could take um, Philosophy to the extreme you could take traveling to the extreme. Okay, you could take um, Just those things to the extreme to the point where they kind of harm you. All right, and we don't want that but Overall, I'd say that this person is in pursuit of the deepest of deep knowledge this person is gonna probably be the ones that acquire that deep knowledge all right this is gonna be the people that you are not you don't care about math you don't care about like okay if you are to learn math you want to you want to learn quantum physics it's like that if you learn English you want to learn like archaic the first language you want to learn Hebrew you want to learn what is that first language um, it's like the the biblical language Archaeum or something like that or it's like a magical language that I always forget but it's that it's the first language you want to learn the first language you're not just gonna want to learn English or philosophy you're gonna want to take it to the root okay whatever you learn in college whatever you're not just gonna want to learn religion you're gonna want to learn theology you see what I mean it's just not it's not like you wanna stay on the surface of any subject that you learn in college or, or that in general, you're gonna to wanna to learn the first knowledge of it. You're gonna to wanna to learn the most intense subject that is regarding 
the the category that you are learning okay so that is you when you go away on trips you don't want to go to where the locals go you don't want to go see the eiffel tower you you don't want to go see holly the hollywood sign you want to if you are in france or you're in berlin you're gonna not you want to knock on the locals door and say hey can you take me to where you guys go because i know you guys don't even fuck with that damn eiffel tower take me to where you go like you're gonna want to know the deepest of the deep you're not gonna want the surface knowledge no way no how and it will be in your pursuit of this listen to me it'll be in your pursuit of this that you find that not only are you, do you kind of become like your father in a way where you take the knowledge to the extreme but that you also find luck that you also find expansion that that the luckiest things happen to you or doors are open for you when you treat your education or when you treat your um pursuit of knowledge this way you know you're gonna transform over life and you're gonna find that through you pursuing the higher knowledge and the the first languages and the secrets of this life that you become very lucky that you become very expansive this could be this could make for someone who's a very good teacher a very good guru you could be a very good preacher you could be um someone who dives into the mystical arts so a teacher of the mystical arts you know astrology could be something that you could be very good at teaching and learning and knowing and you'll probably take it to the nth degree where you want to learn hermetic astrology you know you want to learn the the first you you want to you want to learn the core of things you don't want the surface or anything like that you want to learn the core so if this sounds like you let me know if this sounds like you at all are you someone that you know really wants that communion with god and with knowledge and philosophy you have a very intense way of going about it you also sometimes don't want to tell others what you know or what you learn unless they are the right people to receive that message but if this sounds like you let me know also while you're at it can you let me know the planet that your scorpio in the ninth house is in and i will let you know what that can mean for you okay um but i really do hope that that gave you a little encouragement and some insightfulness that's when it comes to your father i really want you to be able to you know um better able to understand your father in the way that he probably is just like you are now someone who really wants to know the ins and outs of this world and really wants to travel and really wants to instill he probably has found that by him going after those things that he becomes lucky and so he just wants to give you a little bit of that luck you know if that could be something that could help maybe deepen your bond with your father you know i know that when things are under a scorpionic flare it makes it like you don't want to you're just like i don't even want to deal with that or my father you know sometimes it feels like that but if i could serve some advice for that i would really try to just understand where he's coming from and i think where he's coming from is that he's found a lot of luck in taking things to the extreme and so in order for you to find that luck how he has found it he probably wants you to be to follow in those footsteps in his own way but just tell him like hey dad bug off like chill I, I thank you but i'm receiving it but it's time for me to go on my own and do it but that is all i could comprehend and grasp in this video um i will see you guys on the next one okay and i look forward to seeing your comments and your planets all right i'm always 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 excited to let you know what those things are and I, I know some people come to this channel and even though i say that they're like oh no i don't want to bother him or no i like this you guys that's why i'm doing this i want to interpret your birth charts i want to let you know what planet is doing in scorpio in the um ninth house okay so write me tell me what you see and what a uh, planet that you're curious about and i will write back to you almost immediately sometimes with that analysis all right but until the next video i'm rooting for you i am i see you and i will see you on the next one all right bye into scorpio in the 10th house all right now scorpio in the 10th house is going to give me someone who has a lot of power and a lot of influence within the careers that they find themselves in and it's also going to show me someone who is called upon within their career to transform it all right um and so before we get into that very deep and very powerful aspect let's go ahead and separate the aspects that way we are able to do more with the information we've been given and we're not just confined to scorpio in the 10th house okay we can um see these areas playing out in different areas and in different bird charts and go okay 
Jupiter James said Scorpio meant this and the 10th house meant that and now you can do more with those energies and with those aspects in different people's charts and in different areas of life, all right, where they may come up. But Scorpio for me as an astrologer is always going to show me the mysterious aspect of the person. It's also going to show me where this person holds a lot of power and transformation, where this person can offer transformation and also be transformed in that area of life, all right? Scorpio is transformative energy. It's mysterious energy. It's somewhat magical and psychic energy. It's also the energy where you where a lot of trauma will be induced in that area of life but it is only through that trauma that that person builds the fortitude and the strength to become a master in that area of their life all right scorpio is ruled by pluto and it's ruled by mars pluto gives very um uh mysterious energy and obsessive energy and magnetism and power and mars is going to give actionary energy fiery energy okay aggressive energy and so when you mix all that in a gumbo soup when you mix pluto and mars in a gumbo soup that gives the baby of scorpio okay that's why scorpio gets the bad rap of like ooh, scorpio's like er that aggression the mars right and they don't and also scorpio being ruled by pluto gives that mysteriousness you know and that magnetism that even though that they are a little like er they're also a little sexy they're like ooh, who's that you get what i'm saying so that is the, those energies playing out. That is what you are feeling and what you are sensing when you think of Scorpio or when you encounter a Scorpionic person or sign, all right? Now, with the 10th house, the 10th house is ruled by Capricorn and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And this is gonna be the karmic address that I like to say. This is your karmic address. This is how people address you in life. This is your midheaven. This is why when you go out to a party or a bar and you meet new people, the first thing people ask you is, hi, what do you do? What do you do for work? And what they're really asking you is, how do I karmically address you? You see, how do I energetically address you? Because it will be by what you say, what you work as, that the person, you can feel it in their energy. The minute you tell someone what you do, it's like they almost energetically fine tune themselves to go, oh, okay, well, oh and they will address you as such. And that in and of itself is karmic. Who you are in the world is karmic. Everyone can't be a singer, everyone can't be a CEO, everyone can't be a painter, everyone can't be a janitor, everyone can't be a customer service representative. Those things are karmic. And who you are, your midheaven, when you go out in public and people ask you, hi, who are you? And they wanna shake your hand, that's your karmic address. What they're really asking you is, hi, how do I address you? How, how do I karmically address you? How do I energetically address you? And that is your 10th house energy, okay? That's your midheaven, that's your career, that is your who you are seen in the world as, all right? That's the top of your chart. That is what uh, the 10th house indicates, okay? So now, what happens when Scorpio, a very powerful planet, very magnetic planet, well, magnetic sign, when it goes into, <laughs> when it goes into the 10th house, what happens okay so for me i automatically get ceo vibes i get someone who is called on to come into a career to transform it for the better who is a leader who someone has a lot of influence and is very adept in the area of their career this person's going to have a lot of power a lot of influence a lot of magnetism a lot of say so and they are also going to be someone that has to strategize within their career you know they they probably work around people who are sharks not actual physical sharks, but sharks in the sense that everyone is a beast, you know, and it's very competitive and they have to kind of, it's, but it's not outward competitiveness. Remember, wherever Scorpio is, it's going to be, it's going to be psychically competitive. It's going to be undercurrent competitiveness. It's going to be strategic competitive. It's, it's not going to be out in the open, like we're fighting and we're dueling. It's going to be, I'm smiling in your face, but at the same time, I know what you want. I know what you're onto and I'm three steps ahead of you. Hi. That's what's gonna give the air and the flavor of your career is that you're gonna have to, and you are going to be called upon within your career to help transform this very industry. And the industries that you find yourself in, they're, they're gonna have a lot of power. When you go out, I guarantee that whatever you do for your career, when you go out and people ask you what you do or who you are, they go like this. 
Oh, oh, well, let me get you a chair. Oh, oh, whatever you, I promise you, whatever you do in your career, and I, this could be for the people who are actually really achieving their midheaven and really at the, the, the pinnacle of it, when you are achieving it, I promise you the thing that you say you do, it gets people to go, oh, they, they, st they sit up a little taller. They begin to address you with respect. You know, it commands an authority. You have a very big authority with whatever you attach yourself to. You, whether that be you're a part of a big company, whether that be within a company, you're in a very high position within that company. You know, you could work at McDonald's, but you'll probably be a, mig, uh, a, a uh, area manager of that McDonald's. You see what I mean? So you could be in a just a very powerful position within the careers or the jobs that you find yourself in at all times. Whether no matter what you do, you always find yourself at that top spot. And in order to get there, you have to be very strategic and very influential. And almost you have to kind of do it in a very secretive, cunning way. Okay, so. With Scorpio in the 10th house, it gives me very much CEO vibes. It, give me, it gives me someone who probably has to watch their back and tries to protect their spot. You're not gonna want people to come for your spot and you're always gonna be on guard for that. Um, and you're also gonna be someone who has a lot of influence and is has the capacity to lead and to transform the career you're in. The career you are in will also transform you. You know, you could just, you could be this humble college kid, right? You could be this humble person, but when you get the title that you get, it it just, it transforms you. It makes you stand with a little bit more authority. It, it, it instills confidence within you. It, it gives you a taste and a dose of power, okay? You will have power in this life and people will see you with a lot of power, all right? Um, but yeah, if this sounds like you, can you let me know? Can you let me know if this sounds like you? Uh, write it down in the comments below. Write it down in the comments below and also tell me the planet that your, um, that your Scorpio in the 10th house is in and I'll write back what that could mean for you. But as I was saying that I was getting a little bit of a download and the biggest download that I had and it's going to be a part of uh, my inspirational piece of this, but my, my biggest inspiration for you though is that I, your career could also be extremely intense. That's something that you need to look out for and that you need to be aware of. Um, especially when you don't know you don't know and you just go along with it and you may think that everyone's career is like this but this your career could really wear down on you because now that I think about it with Scorpio aligning with Saturn is that it's gonna require a lot of work out of you. It's gonna require, you know, the deepest of deepest of parts of you. And you probably really do need people to talk to. And you, this could lead into other areas of your life where maybe you overeat or you overwork out or you over drink because it's just too much sometimes. It's too much for you to handle. Know that you do have the power to handle it. You can handle it, but I also don't want it to, um, affect you in the way that I know it has, which is it being very intense. Wherever Scorpio is, it's going to be intense and it's going to be intense for the person to maintain and handle sometimes. But know that even in its intensity that you have the capabilities to do it. You know, you wouldn't be given the challenge if you weren't the perfect one to solve it. And I know that may sound cliche sometimes, but really the, the universe gives the strongest test to our hardest soldiers and know that wherever Scorpio is, it being in your 10th house, that power is gonna come with a lot of responsibility. I'm sure you know that, but know that you are the perfect person to handle that test and handle that power, okay? But just be aware. If you need a break, take a break. If you have to get away sometimes, get away. Let your friends know what is going on with you, all right? Don't think that you can't talk to people. Let people know what is going on in your career, okay? I know that you want to always have an air about you that is powerful and that's strong and that you've got things together, but everyone needs a shoulder to lean on or some advice that they can relate to people, you know? Know that you have people around you. Now that I think about it, I need to text my friend who has a Scorpio in the 10th house. <laughs> <laughs> but I really do hope that you guys got some inspiration and some encouragement per this unique placement. If you would like for me to do a different um, placement within your chart, let me know in the comments below and I'll add that to the queue of videos that I can get out for you guys. But until next time, I'm rooting for you. Um, I, I know you'll win. I know you got this and I will see y'all on the next video. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye. Into Scorpio in the 11th house. Now, Scorpio in the 11th house is gonna give me the energy of someone who is in pursuit of very deep 
and transformative relationships with their friends and communities that they find themselves in. You are going to be someone that really wants to transform the collective or do something that helps people um, on a very deep and transformative way, okay? Um, but before we go ahead and really dive deep into that aspect, let's go ahead and separate the aspects. That way we are able to do more with the information that we've been given and we're not just confined to Scorpio in the 11th house, okay? So um, with Scorpio, Scorpio for me is always going to show me where the mis the mystery and the mystique of a person could be or where it can be playing out. It could also show me where trauma and intensity could be given towards the person so that that person can transform, become stronger, and then become adept in that area, okay? Um, this could also show me where Scorpio is placed. It's going to show me where this person is searching for the underlining currents of life, all right? Where this person is very... Um, very deep and just transformative and just very like mystical okay where the power where they hold a lot of power where they hold a lot of mystique where they want to transform a certain sect of their life all right now scorpio is ruled by pluto and mars and so when you mix pluto and mars together you get the baby scorpio and yeah now moving on to the 11th house the 11th house is ruled by aquarius it is ruled by uh saturn and uranus all right when you mix uranus and Scor uh, uranus and um saturn together you get the baby of aquarius all right so whatever your respective 11th house sign is under know that the original out of the packaging birth chart is gonna have it being aquarius rules the 11th house but in this case you have scorpio in the 11th house so what happens when we get scorpio and we throw it into the 11th house now with scorpio in the 11th house you're going to be someone that your friends, the friends that you find that you want to be around and that you like, are going to be people who are very deep and transformative. You are not going to like service level friends. You are not going to be a, want to be a part of organizations or corporate functions or jobs or, you know, people and friends that are very fake and superficial. You are not going to want the humdrum mainstream like, you know, hokey doke. You're going to want people who are very deep and passionate about their dreams and their goals. You could also have a very strong hold on the money that you gain. In the future, you could be someone that, although things may look murky in the present, you are gonna be someone in the future that acquires a lot of money and could acquire a lot of influence in life. Whether that be through an organization you build, maybe that be through a group of people that get together and invent something, you are going to, um, have a lot of influence and a lot of power so this could be like politician this could be a scientist this could be someone that does something now this could also venture into like a coven territory maybe you want to be a part of people who are very witchy or very you know secretive people who have a lot of influence in the world you could find yourself aligning with people like that who have a lot of influence in the world and but who are hidden from public view who are hidden from society's view you know you could be the people that are you could you could be around people who are i want to say in different sects of like different different um areas of life like for instance you could be a part of that group that is into very occult sciences and occult studies you know those are people who People don't know where those people are, whether that be like the Illuminati, whether that be uh, Freemasonry, whether that be, you know, people in those types of clubs and organizations. Those people, we don't know what they do. We don't know where they are, or what they do or where they congregate, but you will, you know, or it could be the opposite end of the spectrum where maybe you mingle with people who are in the Fortune 500 and who have hedge funds and who are running these very big companies and you get to sit in boardrooms with them and create policies and create things like that. Like those people, those people don't make mingle in the normal, you know, day to day world with everyone else. They're hidden in places that cannot be accessed and you probably will like that in some shape or form whether that be on the spiritual side or the mystical side or whether that be in the power side of life and in the realm of the world that we live in you know but what i do know is that on either side you are not going to want people who are not deep or who are not um transformative the the relationships you cultivate especially when it comes to the friendships you hold are going to be very transformative okay very um life-changing for you this could also show me where you 
may have very intense relationships and very extreme experiences okay you're like your friends you could probably have those friends that you know growing up there was always something going on with a friend that you had to be there for you were like always someone that was going through things with the groups that you were a part of something happened or maybe you were ostracized in that group maybe you were ousted in that group maybe you were ridiculed in that group or maybe that group you and that group did very bad things together or very cra had crazy experiences together where now you guys are bonded for life. This could give me the energy of someone who probably was in a gang growing up or someone who, whenever they did get into a friendship, it was just very, very intense, okay? For whatever reason, for good or for bad. But if this sounds like you, can you let me know? Let me know in the comments if this sounds like you. You know, this is a very general video. And if you were to tell me the planet that your uh, Scorpio 11th house is in, like a planet that you have in that 11th house, if you tell me, I can write back to you what you specifically could be experiencing with that planet being in your Scorpio 11th house, all right? Because that can really change and influence what could be happening with this placement, all right? Among other things in your chart. But yeah, if that sounds like you, let me know. What I will say and what I will encourage and advise for you is to try to really definitely go after and be very like, you know, have a sixth sense and a third mind as to the friends that you really wanna be a part of. Know and see if the visions that you have for your life and the dreams and goals that you have for your life, if the friends that you have, if they aren't aligning with that, on a deep, deep level, then those are not the, the friends for you or the people that you need to be congregating with, okay? Because for you, again, I really see you getting together with people of like-minded influence and like-minded power who are going to really transform the collective on a very big and powerful scale. Because Pluto rules Scorpio and so does Mars. And so you're gonna have, you're gonna have a lot of action towards power in this area. You could be someone that rules uh, organization. You could be a CEO. You could be someone that is always called upon in big organizations. You could be a part of a big organization and you help transform that organization for the better, okay? But yeah, that was my video. I really do hope that you got some insight and encouragement from this unique placement. If you would like me to do a different placement within your birth chart let me know in the comments and i will get that up in the queue as a part of some videos that i can get out for you guys but until next time know that i'm rooting for you i see you and i will touch base with y'all in the next video bye to scorpio in the 12th house you know scorpio in the 12th house is gonna give me someone who has a lot of power in the mystical realms and in their dream life you know this is gonna give me someone who also probably hides that power in a very deep and intrinsic way but before we go ahead and really dive deep into that mystical placement let's go ahead and separate the aspects that way we are better able to do more with the information we've been given and we're not just confined to scorpio in the 12th house okay um that way when we're reading other people's bird charts or these things come up we can go okay Jupiter James told me that you know the 12th house meant this and he told me that Scorpio meant that and now you can go out and read other people's bird charts you can interpret other people's placements and combinations where they may lie because now you know what these two things mean separately outside of your placement and they say to know other people you got to know yourself all right and this is how you do it so with Scorpio in the bird chart Scorpio in the bird chart is always going to show me where the mysterious forces in life may happen to the person where things may be just kind of like hidden from the person and where they these people are very protective of this area of their life this person could have a lot of influence and control and power in this area of their life and it is also where this person may endure a lot of trauma and and take things to the extreme and through that trauma this person becomes stronger and becomes more adept in this area of life wherever Scorpio is sitting in or you know yeah where it's sitting in so yeah and and scorpio is ruled by pluto and mars if pluto and mars were to mix together they have the baby of scorpio all right now the 12th house the 12th house is the house of faraway lands it is the house of um isolation it's the house of you know asylums and hospitals and anywhere where people are taken away to rehabilitate and like you know it's hidden it's isolation it's things that you it's like the it's a it's a theme of like i call it hiding to heal 
When you go to jail, what are you doing? You are basically kind of hidden away so that you heal. When you go out to a hospital, you are hidden away so that you heal, okay? It's where you, it's escapism, it's your dream life. It's, it's where you, again, if you go to sleep, think about that, you are isolating yourself so that when you go to sleep, you hide and you heal in a way. So yeah, that's, and it's ruled by Pisces. 12th house is ruled by Pisces. It's ruled by Neptune and Jupiter, okay? Because Neptune and Jupiter, I mean, um, Jupiter and Neptune, yeah, they rule Pisces, okay? So this is going to rule the 12th house, okay? It's going to be where things are kind of hidden from you, where things are just out of view. It's your creative forces. It's your escapist forces. It's those themes, all right? So now what happens when we take Scorpio and we put it into uh, the 12th house? This is going to give me someone who, for me, this is like, this is like Pisces and... Scorpio mixed together. You are going to be extremely spiritual. You are going to be someone who is extremely psychic, extremely adept. You are also going to be someone who, you know, you're you're probably saved from a lot of trauma and a lot of intensity in your life because you are so spiritual and because you're so uh, um, connected to the higher realms and the higher forces of life. You are someone that has been kind of, because if Scorpio is in this house, right, the house of losses, the house of things that are kind of remiss on you, it means that for you, you are saved from a lot of trauma within your life. A lot of trauma probably does not happen to you. And if there are things that are to happen to you that are traumatic, it's going to be hidden. Like you're you're not gonna know that these things have happened to you. Like it could be maybe su subtle mental health problems, very subtle like um, things that maybe happen over time that you aren't aware of, that don't affect you in the now. They just kind of happen over a course of time. Like this makes me believe that like, like uh, bone degeneration could happen to you or mental degeneration can happen to you. These are things that happen over time and by the time it's at its worst, you won't even know that it's happening. It's like that. It's like nothing ever intense really, really happens to you because you're saved from that with that force being hidden. It's it's in a house that it, you will not experience. It's something that is not within your scope or within your realm of possibility that happens for you, okay? So you could be a very big mystic. You can heal people on a very psychic and spiritual level. You could be someone that is I don't know if I said it, very psychic, very clairvoyant. You know how other people are feeling and you can get these downloads and these insights from your dreams, from the dreams that you have at night, you can be, you can get these downloads, you know, you just know what people are going through and how the collective is feeling. And you probably keep those emotions. You probably do keep your emotions, those deep, 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 dark emotions. You keep those hidden away in the recess, re recesses of your mind and you don't really confront those feelings. But you do know at the end of the day that you feel something and you probably feel very deeply, but you isolate those feelings. You categorize those feelings as something that will be dealt with on a later day. But yeah, this is a really cool placement for someone who can be extremely mystical, extremely adept in the mystical arts and astrology and religion. And you could be extremely creative, extremely musical, Try to, try to, try to, try to, if you have this, try to make that as a part of your career. You could be someone that really transforms people on a very psychic level, on a very creative level. You can be a musician, an artist, and through you offering that as a part of your service in your career, you can make a lot of money and you can transform others with that. You can be a tarot card reader, an astrologer, um, anything very deep, creative, and mystical, okay? You could be very lucrative for that in your career, okay? So, and try not to hide that. Try, try. I know it's very hard for you, especially with Scorpio in the 12th house, but what I do know about Scorpio in, the tw Scorpio in general is that when you do finally come around to showing this thing that you do, it can have a lot of power, a lot of influence, and it can help change a lot of people for the better, okay? That is what I do know. If this sounds like you, let me know in the comments below if this sounds like you. Are you someone that you feel psychic, that you feel that you're in tune with the higher knowledge and the inner workings of the universe? Are you that person? Are you someone that, you know, tarot cards comes really easy to you, videos on YouTube and like astrology comes very easy to you. For some reason, you just feel an affinity for it, but sometimes you don't really want to express it. You're like, mm, 
I, I had like something could happen and you knew it ha you knew this thing was gonna happen like a week ago but you were just afraid to tell somebody you were like you were afraid to warn your mom about that feeling that gut feeling that you had about this person or the situation and you just felt like oh maybe you were being paranoid maybe you were just like you know again yeah being paranoid but it came to pass you know that could be something that you also feel you sometimes feel paranoid about things and about, and about people you can probably see into the core of people and be very careful of that be very careful as to not see the the bad in people because you can see that first and foremost before anything you probably know that you can see into the shadow side of people that's what it is you can be someone that sees into the shadow side of people even when they are presenting to you the light side when they are trying to be good and they mean well but for you you could just see automatically into the shadow side try to take that as a cue that that sometimes that shadow side of a person isn't always who they are it's something that they are working against and take the person that they're showing you for face value until that thing until that shadow side comes out and it tries to harm you that's when you are in fair reasonings and in fair calculations of that person but i really want to warn you against paranoia okay because with pluto in the 12th you could be kind of a little paranoid sometimes here and there about what other people's intentions are what a situation may be okay but for the most part this makes for a very extremely spiritual and creative human being who could really offer spirituality as a part of their service and be very good at transforming people on a soul level if only if only they find the courage to express it so express it okay um let me know if this sounds like you let me know if there's a planet within your um, 12th house that you have your Scorpio in the 12th house let me know if you have a specific planet that you're curious about that you um, want me to interpret I'll only do one and unless you would like a birth chart I can do many at one time but just for the sake of continuity and to keep things short and sweet and quick give me one planet that is in your Scorpio in the 12th house and I will write back to you what you could be experiencing with that all right I would love to do that for you um, yeah also let me know if there's a different placement within your birth chart you would like for me to cover and I will get that in the queue as a part of the video that I can get out for you guys but know that I'm rooting for you I see you continue to be mystical continue to be transformative try not to hide that all right I love you have a great day bye